Let's make a garter stitch blanket complete with growing stripes. We'll cast on, make that quick garter stitch, change colors, and even work the yarn up the side so you don't have to weave in all those tails. Here today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Today we're working on the Loom Knit conversion of the In A Wink Baby Blanket pattern from Your Inspirations. If you'll click on that link below, you can get your pattern or you can go to the Needle Knit version video and see how to make that. For the supplies, you're going to need two different colors of blanket yarn. You'll need three balls of each color in the small or one ball of each color in the very large ball. We are working with a large gauge 11 16 inch spaced loom. You can use any other loom, any other yarn, just make sure that your uh, loom is appropriate to the yarn that you're using and your size may vary but you can uh, get a swatch made and figure that out uh, as to what size it'll be just click on that link below and we'll give you a swatch calculator to uh, figure that part out let's jump right into the pattern and begin to make a garter stitch you need a row of knits followed by a row of purl and we're going to do a series of those to make these long ridges. I'll also show you a quick way to do it. Now in my cast on it has a nice tight cast on uh, where it's not too loopy or loose and that is using the long tail cast on. You can use a double e wrap cast on but it might not look as nice and firm and tight as this one. Now uh, I'm going to show you how to do that and you want to start your slip knot in the opposite direction that you want your first stitch for the first row because we're going to start in this direction, go over here, and then we're going to purl our first row to get this first pronounced garter stitch. So left-handed knitters, you're going to want to start your slip knot on the right. In order to do the long tail cast on, we're going to measure out the uh, width of our project. We're going to do three times that amount. And so I'm going to measure one, two, three. My sample is going to have 16 stitches and then I make a slip knot and place that right here in the middle of that onto my first stitch or first peg. We're going to put our tail towards us and the ball in the back. Okay, keep these separate from each other so you know which is which. So we're going to wrap our tail around in an E-wrap on that second peg. And then we take our ball and wrap in the unit stitch. So in the front and around to the back. And then we lift up and over to knit that stitch. Okay, and that locks it in. And then we move on to the next one. So we're going to E-wrap with our tail. And we're going to U-wrap with the ball and knit that stitch over. And you'll have this nice firm cast on. For the blanket, you'll cast on all of your pegs and stop at the end. Do not connect. If you need to put stitch markers on here to show you where to stop and start, then I would go ahead and do that now. So continue casting on in your stitches and uh, pause your video. I'll meet you back up for the first row. For row one, we're going to purl. So we put our working yarn in the front and Put the yarn down below that first stitch and we're going to pull up a loop take the old loop off and put the new loop on and then tighten that up okay you can actually put your tail down in the middle now and you're just going to leave that tail alone and only work with the ball yarn now so we're going to continue by purling the remainder of the row lifting that old stitch off putting the new one on so again put the yarn down below Lift up the new loop, take the old off, put the new on, and pull. All right, pause your video. I'll meet you back up for row two, and then I'll show you the shortcut to making this garter stitch. See you in a moment. All right, we've completed one ridge, and we're ready to begin row two, but we're also going to do row two and three at the same time. And that's what makes this faster. So that we'll be making a full ridge while we do this. So you're going to E-wrap. You're just working your yarn clockwise around this uh, each, each peg and going all the way down, wrapping all stitches and go to the end. Okay, so this is a E-wrap net. Okay, going to the end and we're gonna knit over this last stitch and it locks it in. So now we're going to begin row three, which is purl. So row two is knit. We've just kind of pre-wrapped our loops here. 
pre-wrapped our stitches. So we're just going to come around and purl this first one, lifting up and over and tightening. And now we can continue on this row. I just go ahead and do three or four at a time, lifting up and over, knitting those stitches, and then I start purling them. And this is what makes two rows at one time. You're not actually working the stitches one on top of each other because the yarn has already been there uh, a whole round before you. It's just waiting in place to work. That way you're not working back and forth. It, it's really great for really um, wide panels so that you're not having to um, move every, every row back and forth. You can do two rows at once. Anyway, you're gonna continue this on until the end and um, then we will move on to the next step. See you in a moment. All right, let's talk real quick about changing color on a garter stitch. You always want to change on the knit row. That way your transition to color is always really pretty. So we have a solid color and then we have the next color. There is no color green peeking through into the uh, white down below here. On the other side, this is where you see it poking through. Do you see how this is a cleaner transition on the other side? That's what we wanna do. So always change the color on your knit row and then you're gonna purl your way back. Then you want to twist your yarn and you continue on with the same color, but you just twist it. Otherwise, you'll get this little gap here. So instead of weaving in tails as we go, we're just gonna twist it. And this is what this looks like on the side. This is These are all very nicely twisted and there are no gaps that way. And then this end will never have any of that twisting here. You can always add a border if you wish, uh, but these are nicely uh, closed in. All right, let's continue on and learning how to change our yarn. All right, we're ready for contrast B. And I'm working with this lemon lime color. Of course, you can use this sand baby as called out in the pattern or whatever yarn you're working with. Uh, the best way to look at it, this is we're going to grab our new color from underneath our old color whenever we change color. So I like to start this visually to show you which direction you'll be grabbing the yarn every time. It's a good habit to get into. So we're going to begin by e-wrapping this row and leave plenty of tail to weave in later. So we just start by e-wrapping all the way down. And if you need to go ahead and lock in this first stitch, then that's fine. Okay, I, I don't like to put a slip knot there. So just go ahead and e-wrap all the way down. All right, so you're going to work that stitch and then begin with your um, purl row, just as we did before with that quick knit. And just know that you're doing two rows at once. So you've got two sets of garter ridges for each color in this stripe pattern number one. And that's what we're starting with first. Okay, so stripe pattern number one works with two rows of color, I'm uh, sorry, two ridges of color A and then two ridges of color B. And then we go back to A again. And that's really the main pattern. That's all you need to know. So you've just now started this ridge here, and then you're going to be working back this way. So pause your video, meet me back up on this side. I'm going to show you how to twist the yarn together to let it carry up the side. All right, I've completed this first ridge in my new color, color A, and I want to continue in this color, but I need this uh, other color to go you know, up the side. I'll show you an example here in a moment. I want to grab the old color and pull it from underneath. And then when I want to do it one more time, now if I was continuing on the, with the, the uh, color A, then I would just continue now, but want to twist it one more time and it's nice and locked in. Don't pull too tight. You can be a little bit loose with it because it does have to carry up the side. And so now that I've twisted it one more time, I'm ready to begin again. And I'll just begin by e-wrapping here. Okay, so the next time I finish my row and come back, we're just going to grab this new yarn again, the one that we're switching to in A, from underneath as before. Just continue to grab from underneath and it will continue to go in the same direction. You may have to move your balls around or twist your loom through there to get um, all of these from, un uh, from twisting up too much, but it makes for a nice finished edge. 
All right, pause your video. I'm gonna show you what this striping pattern looks like. And you've got your notes. You're gonna to wanna to refer to the blog and it talks about the different striping. So you've got stripe pattern one, two, and three. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is how your stripes pattern will work up. This is stripe pattern one. And in this sample, we have seven stripes of color A and six stripes of color B or up to 10 inches, okay? And then stripe pattern two begins and it starts here with the color B and we work five stripes of A and five stripes of B or until you have 22 inches. So we go all the way up until here and you end on an A and we're gonna begin with B. And then we have stripe pattern three and we have four stripes of each color here. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. And that ends at about 35 inches. And you're going to stop this last set a color of A on this seventh row instead of eight. And now we are ready to purl bind off in A. We're gonna be working from right to left in this. If you are left-handed, you're gonna work from left to right. So we are ready to do a purl bind off because I'm working back in this direction here. And so I want to purl my first stitch. If we were doing a basic bind off, we would be knitting that stitch. So all you're doing is you purl instead of knit. So we purl the first stitch and then we purl the second stitch and then we lift it up and over and put it on that first stitch there, lift it up and over and then move the stitch. All right, now becomes the same repeat that we'll use the rest of this time. So we go on to the next stitch, purl it, pick it up and put it on the first stitch, knit over, and then move the stitch. Okay, place it, purl the next one, pick it up, put it on the first one, Purl the stitch, I'm sorry, knit it over, <laughs> pick it up and move it. So we're purling in pattern or we're binding off in pattern, which on this pattern, the purl stitch is appropriate. So that's really how you bind off in pattern. And in this case, we're purling. All right, so you're gonna go all the way to the end and I'll meet you to finish it up. All right, so at the end of our bind off, we're just going to do that last stitch, pick it up and move it over, and then work that last stitch up and over. So you're going to clip your yarn and then just pull this all the way through, weave in your tails, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And then now you can just pull that straight on through. And so now you just want to weave in those tails. Let's do that now. All right, so for this green one, I had accidentally kept twisting it. It wasn't really necessary. So I can just pull this back out until I get uh, back to the green because it's not really necessary to show that edging unless you like it, uh, in which case you'll have to weave right back on top of it. So just pull that out if necessary and get right back down to where the green is here and put it on your wide eye tapestry needle Okay, and you're gonna begin sewing in and you want to follow the pattern here. So we're gonna follow where we have these little umbrellas and smiles and I'm gonna follow the green. So I'm gonna go around this bump here and down. Okay, so I'm gonna go down through a loop here where I know it goes around. Okay, and then I'm gonna go around this way and up through this bump here and go back so it'll go up and over and you're just gonna continue following it around just the same. And that's it, that's how you weave in the tails on a garter stitch, and you'll do that on all your other tails. All right, I'll see you in a moment. Well, I hope you liked that video and you have enjoyed working on your garter stitch baby blanket. Be sure and let us know what color did you make on yours. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love you to do so and hit that like button. Also, every Friday we come out with a new video, so stay tuned and subscribe for more.
Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.